We're going to get started. Very warm welcome to everybody here this, this morning um, as we get to pay tribute and as we give thanks um, for Auntie Naomi's life and as we just celebrate her life and, um, and we give thanks to God for her life. And I know that um, she's closed her eyes on this world, but she's opened her eyes on the next and she's opened her eyes on the Lord that she loved and served um, all the days of her life. 94. Wow, uh, my dad is 91 at the moment, and uh, it's just such a, a lovely age, but I know that in the last time she struggled a little, and so today we just give thanks uh, for her life. And so let's just open in a word of prayer, and I'm going to read a scripture, and then we're going to sing the first song. And when we sing, you don't need to stand up, you can just either watch the words on the screen, or you can sing along as the words come up, and, um, and then I'll continue from there. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for today, Lord, and thank you that we get to celebrate a life well lived. We want to thank you, Lord, for Auntie Naomi. We want to thank you, Lord, for every memory of her. We thank you that today we can just come together and we can celebrate her life and we can give thanks for her life. And Lord, we know that she has been reunited with um, the man that she loved, Uncle Jack, and we thank you for that today, Lord, and we just bless you for her and for her life. We pray, Lord, for her family, and we just commit them to you. I think of Kevin and Wendy and Roger and Keegan, Lord, and the greater family. Just want to bring them before you, Lord, and just ask you that you would be their strength. Thank you for your word, Lord, that reminds us that you are the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our times of trouble so that we may comfort others with the comfort we ourselves have received. And so today, Lord, we commit this service to you. We pray that it will bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a passage of scripture that I want to read. and says this, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will all be changed. For perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then, um, then what is written um, will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the, is, is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The first song we're going to sing is When the Roll is Called Up Yonder, I'll Be There. I'm just going to read the family tributes to you um, this morning. And just to say as I start that, one of the, the first memories that I have of, of Auntie Naomi is um, some 20 years ago, um, when we first came to the church, Uncle Jack was the um, chairman of the call committee, and I'd had contact with them um, over email and over phone, and, and I can remember this looking, walking into the airport and seeing this couple waiting um, for me, and you know they um, were just such a comforting sight. Um, Uncle Jack with his big embrace, and Auntie Naomi at his side, and uh, just such a, a beautiful memory. And, and so just through the service, I'm going to just share certain memories that I have. I know that in recent years, one of the things that she loved the most was when she was still able to go for tea and when she was able to go and drive around the peninsula to different places. And she spoke often of, of those times when she could go out to different places and be taken out and by family to do that. I'm going to just read Kevin. Um, um, Naomi's son, his tribute first. In 1927, on the 3rd of September, John and Myrtle Heyman, uh, uh, is that the right pronunciation? Uh, there we go. Welcomed their first child, a girl, Naomi, into the world at Yachasfontein, a small mining town in the Orange Free State. John worked on the mine, and the family grew with, um, with the addition of Naomi's brothers, Nickel and Mike. The local mine closed down and John was forced to desert his family during the Great Depression and seek employment in northern Rhodesia. 
Myrtle, a registered nurse, moved her family to Bloemfontein to be closer to her twin brothers, Victor and Noel Ulshech, who inherited the family farm and would play a major role in Naomi's upbringing. Myrtle married Tommy Walker and had a son, Justin, the baby in the family. And when their marriage failed, Naomi took on responsibility of looking after her siblings and raised Justin while her mother worked in the local library. Mom was aware of her mother, that her mother prayed for her well-being and her prayers were answered when, while staying at the YMCA in Bloemfontein, she met her life part, Albie, or Jack, as everyone called him. Early in, the, in their marriage, they both decided to study at the Bible Institute in Cork Bay for a few years in the 1950s. They settled in Yama's Drift, situated on the banks of the Caledon River, where Jack managed a local mill and was the pastor of the Baptist Church. By the late 1950s, after the arrival of Wendy and Kevin, the family moved to Vepina, four miles from the mill, where Jack started his career with phrases. Life in this small town was great, and Dad would work, go to work on his bicycle, and Mom would further her career as a housewife. By the mid-1960s, Jack was promoted, and we moved to the big city, Bloemfontein. Mom used to drive us to, to and from school, do the housework, and supported Dad in his dedication to the Bloemfontein Baptist Ch Church and Fichard Park Baptist Church. Dad was often away from home for up to two weeks at a time during the 25 years he served as the National Director of Christian Businessmen's Committee, CBMC. And mom kept the home fires burning during his absence without ever complaining. I remember those days when she would wait for me to finish my sport com commitments in primary school and then drive back to the farm and prepare for the evenings. I learned to drive by the time I was 12 years old and I had to just have a smile when I, when I read this. And this would stand me in good stead when I, we returned to, to live in the city. Mom always had my back and kept the secret when she would see me drive off in her car late at night at the age of 14. I have fond memories of the holidays we spent caravanning across the country. I left home at the age of 21 and settled in Cape Town, and I would visit home twice a year and really looked forward to catching up with Mom. I had never seen Mom or Dad argue about anything, admired her love for her family, and dedication to God and the church, and supporting Dad in all that he did. May her soul rest in peace, in eternal peace. Love, Kevin. From Roger, daughter-in-law, and your uh, tribute also had me laughing <laughs> at some of the events that took place. Omar, how does one ever start, even start to describe the artistic character that you were? And that's also how I knew her. She was really just an artistic character and and that's the way her mind worked as well. My memories are fun ones of you giving us a beautiful antique Vastafel as a wedding present and then asking for it back. Or giving me some beautiful antique furniture since we both shared a love for such things and then making Opa come and fetch it as you felt you needed it back. Until Opa, who never lost his temper, had enough and said, Naomi, yeah, I could picture this in my mind. I really could. <laughs> as, you're, as I was reading this, I'm like, I could see Uncle Jack doing this right here. And because I saw him once or twice, not ever arguing, but I'm reprimanding her for something that had happened. And um, he never lost his temper, had enough, and said, Naomi, no more of this. If you give Roji something, it is not coming back. I will treasure the memories of you and um, Hunji Ma chatting away. But my best memory of Omar was when, invited us, when she invited us for lunch, and she hardly ever cooked. And she was so proud to tell me that she had mince, made mince with the Raja curry powder. This is the worst thing that you can tell an Indian. What a laugh we had, and I obviously did not eat the mince curry. Oh, and how you loved Keegan. Oh, that, that is so true. Um, both um, your mom and dad just adored Keegan. Uh, um, thank you, Omar, for the lack of laughs. And I use 
the word lacquer as you were such as you were such were always so posh with English, no slang. I think you always thought that you were the Queen's cousin. Your memory always amazed me. You could remember that Colin had a beautiful wife called Loretta, or that Chris was in Bulgaria. Of course, as you got older, you got confused between Keegan and, and Inesh. But that, that you could laugh at yourself was a greater joy. I was lucky to know you, Omar, and I have started reading all your lovely stories in your journals. Yena, Omar, Mar, and handwriting is hectic. <laughs> Yena, Omar, you, Mar, your handwriting is hectic. It is your way of teaching me to be patient. Go well, Omar. Opa must be so happy that he's Naomi has arrived. And please, Omar, don't make Opa make, tea, make you tea all the time. With love, Roger. Keegan, and this is her grandson. Dearest Omar, you must be glad that you are back with your dearest Jack. May the two of you rest in peace in heaven and, have a ble and be blessed with an eternity of happiness and love. Love you, Keegan. And this is from Wendy. Naomi's daughter, my dearest mom, I have so many fond and special memories of you. Thank you for the kind and loving mom that you were to me. You were truly a, a tough cookie up until the day that, of your passing. You had such a sense of humor, and it was wonderful that you could laugh at yourself. During your stay at the frail care facility, we share special moments and many laughs. In the last few years, you have had such, beautiful such a beautiful imagination and would have given J.K. Rowling's, Rowling's um, of Harry Potter fame a good go. It was wonderful me to share with you in the fairy tale imaginary world that you mostly lived in. We posted together in Hollywood, we posed together, sorry, in Hollywood with Buzz Aldrin, flew in your helicopter to Kareaput, our fa family farm. You spend a lot of nights with Dad in the Garden of Eden and many, many more interesting stories you shared with me. We had good laughs together as we spoke about and remembered the good old days. It was such an eye-opener to me how you accepted your old age and frailty, never questioned it or complained, just complete acceptance of where you were in your life journey. It was such a privilege for me to be able to spend many hours at your bedside during the last three days of your life. You lived quietly and you died quietly. Rest in peace. Love you forever, Mom. Rest in peace, Wendy. I'm going to ask Hiram to come and just share with us from CBMC a tribute as well. Good day, everyone. Um, yeah, what a privilege for me to, to be here and to have the opportunity to bring tribute and honor to Salina Wumi. Um, before I start, um, much of the things that I've written in here, I must not take actually out because you already covered that, but I, I think there's still enough. What I did though, I've got it in four different languages uh, because I suppose this YouTube might go all over the world, but for the sake of South Africans, I translated the Hebrew and the Japanese back to English. So I will get to that in a moment. So yeah, first of all, allow me the opportunity to give our heartfelt condo condolences to the family from CBMC side, Wendy and Jack and, and Raji and also Keegan. Um, we know that Tanina Wumi was dearly loved and everybody loved her. I don't think she, she had any um, enemies. In the words of our current board chairman, Paul Duplessis, who had the privilege in the same church in the uh, 10th of October 2014 to give the tribute to your dad, um, he wrote in Afrikaans, Now, Umi was the mother of CBMC. Groot is the feast viering in the Himmel, was sy and Jack now by mekaar is. Sy was voorwaar vir ons het toonbeeld van a kind van Jesus in a rolmodel van elk een van ons. Wat er voorig was het nie om haar te kon ken nie. Ons bid vir Wendy en Kevin. Die woorde van Paul de Plessie. Yeah, from my side, it's not always easy to bring tribute uh, and to say something about someone that was so dearly loved and um, by family and friends and everyone. I had the privilege to meet Tanina Wumi and Jack about 15 years ago. So unfortunately, the first 80 odd years of her life, I wasn't part of it. 
So I only get to know her when she was quite old already, but what a gem. And, and just to come back to the place where she was born, Jagersfontein, um, there was a diamond mine. And I think she was one of the brightest diamonds from that town. Um, we, we dearly loved her. Yeah, the danger is always when you do something like this is to forget something or that you don't mention something that others might think is important. But I would like to try and cover a little bit of her life, my personal experience, as well as the positive influence that she had on, on the lives of so many. From my side and my own experience, I just want to mention a few characteristics that I, that I picked up in Tanina Umi. She feared the Lord with all her heart. She loved him. She always spoke and behaved wisely. I don't know if it was like that when you were kids also, Wendy, but uh, to us that is what, what we experienced. She was a witness for God. She never behaved foolishly. She had true inner beauty. Um, she had an unshakable faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. She de dedicated her life to God's business and relied on God even through tough times. She walked in love and obedience, and sacrificial love and commitment was part of her life. The meaning of the name Naomi, this is where the Hebrew and the Japanese comes in now. In Hebrew, it says Naomi means pleasant, beautiful, and gentle. In Japanese, it means honest and correct. I think in a nutshell, this is who Tani Naomi was. Um, I think uh, you mentioned in, in the tribute there um, already, Basil, that um, she went to YWCA in Bloemfontein, and that is where she met Jack Smith by waving from the, from the patio, or from the balcony to him. Um, and he called her Hami on her surname, that was Haman. Um, eventually, she moved to, um, after they got engaged, she moved uh, to Klerksdorp and came to visit him over weekends or, or during holidays. And during such one holiday in uh, March 1951, she said to Jack, listen, I committed my life to Christ, and I think it's time that you also do that. Or you can take your engagement ring back. So Jack was a bit in a, in a predicament, so he went with, to church with her that Sunday evening on the 27th of March 1951, and he committed also his life to Christ. And we know what the result of that was. Um, as, as a result of Naomi's obedience and prayers for her husband, or future husband, that they got married in eight, on the 8th of December 1951, um, she was influential in his role that he later played in CBMC. Um, and she was a supportive, caring, and loving wife. Um, and if I read from, 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 from Uncle Jack's um, book that we compiled a few years ago on his, on his um, devotions, in his own words, he described his wife as my dearbare vrouwki, vrouw lief, my liefling hevelijks maar. Um, and he also said that she was God's gift to him. So Naomi's faithfulness and dedication changed the direction of their lives. And I think that she could never imagine the enormity of that impact. Um, after their marriage, um, Jack kept on working as a fitter and turner but they also um, bought a service and petrol station, and Naomi had to raise the kids and work there as well. And I, I also read in his book that he went to work with his bicycle, and Naomi would follow later in the day to come and help in the business. In 1954, they recommitted their lives to Christ, and they got a calling to go to the mission field. And that is when they decided to go for two years to the Bible school in Kalk Bay in Cape Town, but as money was scarce, they had to sell everything they had. And guess what was also up for sale? That was Miss Engagement Ring. <laughs> that is the dedication she, she had. But luckily, as far as I could understand, it wasn't necessary to sell it eventually because they could sell at least something else. Um, after the two years in, in Cape Town, they went back to Bloemfontein. And for 17 years, they actually waited for a confirmation from the Lord where they must be involved in the mission field which they thought it would be. But then in the early 1970s, um, he was uh, contacted by one of these uh, church friends, uh, Pete Stein, who introduced him to CBMC, the Christian Businessmen's uh, Committees at that stage. 
and he said to Jack, you were elected as the national president in your absence. So congratulations, you are going to join us. <laughs> so those of you that knew him, Pete, will also understand that. So at the end, they became missionaries in the marketplace. And for today, 50 years later, um, as many before us, and I believe for many people still to come, we benefit from this obedience of Fanny Naomi and Um Jack. Naomi played a pivotal role in this process, and she was also instrumental in Jack accepting uh, Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. We as CBMC will always have reason to and will always be grateful to Tani Naomi, who through her faithfulness touched and changed many lives. We will remember her as a woman of faith, courage, obedience, and unselfish love. No wonder that Jack once said that he would never trade this old model in for younger ones. And just to emphasize her humbleness and love for God, I want to close, uh, close with a few quotes in Afrikaans from Jack's devotionals over the years. Um, this first one was when they went through the, walked through the mall. Um, I don't know if they ever did Christmas shopping, but they, went, they walked through the mall and watched the lights and everything in the shops. And when they came back, Naomi said, this is really a mooi winkel. And they did wonderful good. But weet know what? I had nothing to do with this. She was content. She was happy with what she had. Um, then another time he writes that while they were watching TV and, and on the news and everything is a mess up, she said to Uncle Jack, this is good that our old people are going to die, because things here are now for us to feel. And then the next time when the same things came on TV again, she said, Jack, this is but good that we are on the path out. And our eyes are festive now on Jesus, what for us is. I remember the one day when I visited them in the, in the retirement village. They said to me that life in the waiting room is exciting. Um, I want to conclude with a, with a few words from, from Jack, from his devotional in his one book. We, he wrote that he's preparing to be at a festival. And he says, there I won't be deaf anymore. I will be able to hear and understand what the groom will tell us at that festival. I won't be tired anymore, and I will have a voice that will be perfect, and me and my wife will sing the most beautiful duets together. And finally, he said, A paar dagen gelede sit ek en vrou lief en dink oor die dinge van die lewe en besef dat ons tevrede is. En onwillekerig begin ons twee saam te sing. I am satisfied with Jesus. He has done so much for me. But the question that comes to me as I think of Calvary, is my master satisfied with me? I want to say I am sure he is. Goodbye till we meet again with love from all at CBMC. What special and beautiful memories. And I'm going to just share with you from God's word now, and I'm not going to speak for long, but I just want to share something with you. And um, when Wendy asked me what the scripture was that I was going to be using, the very first thought that came to mind, and I've never ever used this passage of scripture to preach on at a funeral before, but um, my mind immediately went to the stories of the Garden of Eden. And um, I can remember... Uh, just Auntie Naomi, when I went to visit her the one day, um, telling me the story of what she had seen in the Garden of Eden. And um, she had told me that there was the little lady who had worked for them um, years, years ago, was there waiting in the Garden of Eden. And uh, she saw Uncle Jack was there waiting in the Garden of Eden. As Wendy shared in her um, tribute, the, her imagination was quite um, wonderful. And then she said she saw um, Trevor Nell there. And Trevor Nell is the senior, he was the senior pastor here for, for a number of years. And he still is ministering with us here. And so I came back and said to um, Trevor, because he's still alive, I said to him, you need to pass away quite quickly now because 
Auntie Naomi sees you in the Garden of Eden welcoming her. And if you're not there when she comes, um, she's going to be disappointed. And um, there was a, a, a lovely laugh together. And Trevor Nell is still with us, so she, he, he wasn't there to welcome her. But um, I thought I'd take you to a, a passage of Scripture that, that reflects not so much on the Garden of Eden, but it's at the end of, end of time. And it's just a beautiful picture, and you'll see how it all relates to the Garden of Eden in a moment. And it's from Revelation chapter 22. So Genesis is the beginning, and Revelation is the end of the Bible. And uh, this is now the end of time when history is gone, and there is just uh, heaven ahead of us. And this is what it says. And then the angel showed me a river, the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and no longer will there be any accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more, and they will, be no more, they will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light and will reign forever and ever. And the, the reality of this passage of Scripture, and just in terms of death and of dying, is just this is what waited for Naomi on the other side as she closed her eyes on this world she opened her eyes on the savior that she loved and this is describing for us the end of time whilst genesis helps us understand the beginning and we know that in the beginning there is also these these trees that are referred to um, in this passage of scripture there's the tree of life that is referred to that is again referred to here in revelation and we know that in the beginning as god created there was this garden and there was this tree of life from which man could eat but in that same garden, there was the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and unfortunately, man takes from that and sins and, and eats of that tree. And there is a separation that happens um, between man and God. And we know that the angel guards that tree, that tree of life from which we could eat in terms of the power and knowing and understanding God's life himself in us. And no longer would that be possible. But we also know that there is another tree that is referred to in the Bible, and that's the tree and the say of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who comes into this world and who dies on the cross of Calvary and who is risen again from the dead and who rises again from the dead and who conquers death and sin and who restores and enables us to be restored into right relationship with him so that, that we can come to that tree of life. Now, this passage really helps us understand a couple of things about God's life and what he has for us. The first of all that he helps us understand is that the complete provision, the water of life. Now I know that um, I've been mountain biking for some time and sometimes you ride up into the mountains and you go to the source of a stream of water and sometimes you come across just pure, pure water that you can drink of and your thirst can be quenched and you can know the life that comes from that stream of water, and you can know that this is pure water. There are other times where you're driving and you see water flowing, and you think, you realize that that's not pure. You see that that is contaminated. And, and this passage reminds us that the, this river comes from the, the, the throne of God and of, of the Lamb, of the throne of God and of Jesus, and that we can drink of that living water and that Naomi is drinking of that living water, that her provision, her thirst has been quenched once and for all. A thirst that every one of us experiences and has in this life, a thirst for this life that, she, that God has. This passage also reminds us that there is this tree that, and it describes this tree of life as being the tree that stands on both sides of the river that, that is just giving bearing fruit in season. 12 different kinds of fruits, and people are able to eat of that. And, and then it says that these, this tree's leaves are for the healing of the nations. And I know that 
in times like we are living in at the moment, our nations need healing. I know that even in our own country, we need healing. We know that there is tension. There have been tensions even in the last couple of weeks in our own country, and there, there is all kinds of things. All kinds of things are said and spoken and dealt with every day of our lives. And and this picture is of that time when there will be this healing of the nations. And then we know that the one thing is that there is the presence of God in this place. We see it all over this particular passage of Scripture. We see that the throne of God and of the Lamb is in the garden as there in the city, the holy city, so to speak. It's the tree of life. The tree of life itself reflects and represents the power of God and the life of God in us and that we can eat of that and know God's will and purpose in our lives. And the presence of God is there and he's amongst them. We know that Auntie Naomi enjoyed the presence of God. And even in her imagination, she was looking forward to that day that she could you know, see him face to face and know him and know what she'd experienced in this life in a temporary kind of way, know that in its fullness. And she's entered into his very presence where she can know his presence on an ongoing basis in an ongoing way. We also know that there is an issue, a matter here of our identity, which says this, it says, they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and night will be no more and they will need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. I think every one of us strives for identity in some or other way. We like to know what our identity is. We like to know, even today, we've been speaking about the past, and we've been speaking about history, and we've been speaking about Uncle Jack and Auntie Naomi, and what happened along the way, and some of the things that took place. And, and even you here today have some of your identity wrapped up in that history that they had together. And here we know that what Naomi knew in part in this life, she now knows in full in the new identity that the, the very name of God is written on her forehead, that when people look at her, they see the child of God. They see a daughter of the living God. They see someone who is embraced and secure in God himself um, at this time. And finally, the passage shares about our purpose and the purpose that they have even as it says, no longer will there be anything cursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will enter into the fullness of worship. I know as a young person, when I was growing up, um, I wasn't really into worship, and when people explained worship to me, they said, you know, and that this is what would happen in heaven. Um, it kind of, you know, is that all that's going to happen in heaven? Is that we're just going to be singing all the time? What if you don't like singing? Um, and um, you don't want to be singing all the time. And i just reminded of this, that, that this worship is all-encompassing. It's where we can understand God for who he is in terms of all his goodness and all his grace and all his mercy. And they will serve him. And they will worship him in the fullness. And as I've grown older, I've begun to understand what a great joy and what a great privilege it is to be able to do that. And then the Bible also says here, and they will reign with him. And they will reign with him. And so we die as believers and as followers of Jesus Christ, not without hope. I think hope is one of those things that perhaps people have said as Christians, we have this crutch that we lean on in times when we are going through difficult times, that Christianity is a crutch, that we lean on a God who says that he has overcome death and overcome sin and overcome the grave. And I want to say I agree with that this morning. It's a crutch that's called hope, that we know that even though this life is hard and that this life is difficult, and even though we don't know peace very often and we don't know provision and sometimes we struggle and even the story of Auntie Naomi having to give up perhaps even her engagement ring which she didn't have to do in the end and having to sell what they had was just to know the provision and I, 
along the way and to enter into the fullness of God's provision. And yes, sometimes there are times in our lives when we don't understand the presence of God in our lives and we, we don't feel as though God is close and we don't experience God's closeness. But our hope is that in that day when we will enter into his presence and the fullness of the joy that God has for us and that we can hear his voice saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. And this passage is just full of the very presence of God where those in the Old Testament uh, were not allowed to know and experience the very face of God and see these faces. Yeah, the Bible reminds us that we will see him and that Auntie Naomi has seen him. And in a time when we struggle with our identity, struggle to know who we are, this identity of being a son or a daughter of the living God. And so our hope is not futile. Our hope is not in vain. And so as a result, we don't die like those who have no hope. Our lives are full of hope. And even in her imagination in her last days, and even in those stories that she would tell of what she would see in the garden, even in those stories is in depth a hope that was in her, that existed in her heart, that yes, her life was coming to an end. Yes, the days of her life were coming to a close, but that wasn't the end of it for her. She waited and anticipated. She waited and anticipated, and in her waiting and anticipation and in her hope, she experienced these different things that she spoke about, and she told us about them, and we could laugh and, and have a good time with her in those moments. But in those moments, and there was this hope that she had, and we experience and know and share in that hope with her today. I want to just read um, now the thank yous from Kevin. And uh, these are uh, uh, just a bunch of thank yous that I want to just read out to you this morning. And then we will sing the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Thank you to all friends who posted condolences via social media platforms. To Basil Sparks for arranging and conducting the service and to DBC for the use of the church. To CBMC and the Durbanville Baptist Church for their prayers and support. A huge thank you and sincere appreciation to Christian Businessmen's Committee of South Africa, CBMC, who have kept in touch and for their faithful and generous monthly con financial contributions towards Naomi's care since Jack's passing in 2014. And CBMC really have, I know that even while Uncle Jack was alive, was just so amazing. So thank you on my, on my behalf as the church as well to you. We are most appreciative to Basil and Heidi Sparks, Trevor and Lorraine Nell, Anne-Marie Vandenberg, Philip and Pietra Vestek, Colin and Loretta Mudley, and Judy Labaskachny, who kept in contact with mom and visited her from time to time. Thank you to Sister Fenta and her nursing staff at Villa Cortona Frail Care for the dedication, care, love they have provided to mom the past six years. It was very comforting to know that she had, was in such good hands. Mom had her own very special fan club at the Frail Care and kept the nursing staff enthralled with her stories and sense of humor. In uh, Sister Fenta's words, Naomi was one of a kind and will not be forgotten. Our thanks to Dr. Pierre Perold and partners for their medical care provided to mom, especially during her last months, also for their condolence card received. Our thanks to Gerard Nordia for choosing and arranging the flowers for today's service with care and love. We appreciate this so much. Thank you to Andre Forgraf of Avbob for the respectful and caring way in which he handled all the arrangements pertaining to mom's passing. Personal thanks from Kevin to Wendy for her care of mom, for ensuring that she was appropriately and neatly clothed for winter and summer, and for seeing to mom's well-being and comfort, and for all for keeping mom's snack box stocked up. The snack box being a highlight for mom, especially the chocolates. And thank you to God for our mother. We're gonna now sing, and again, you can remain seated as you do that, and the words will come up on the screen. It is well with my soul. When
Thank you so much for sharing today with us. I know that there is some water or something to drink as you leave. And uh, thank you for joining the family. I know that um, even just as you heard a little earlier on, Auntie Naomi referring, Uncle Jack Naomi referring to themselves as being in the waiting room. I have um, a long standing with my joke with my dad. Um, he always mentioned and said that, you know, the Lord has given him three score and ten. And after that, he has entered into the waiting room. And three score and ten is 70 years. My dad is 91 years now. I keep on saying to him every time I see him, I say, Dad, when are you going to take that plane? You've been in the waiting room for so long. And uh, we have a, a good joke and a good laugh about that. But Auntie Naomi has taken that plane. And she has entered into the presence and into the joy of the Savior that she loves, loved and served. And so we do and remember that with gratitude and thanksgiving this morning. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much today that we, we mourn, but we mourn as those who have hope. We thank you, Lord, for just the reality of your word and the reality of this passage that reminds us the joy that Naomi has entered into, the joy and the presence of her Savior and her Lord. And what she has only known in part up until this part, she now is knows in full and is fully known. We thank you, Lord, for that. I pray now that you would continue with the family, Lord, that you would strengthen them. And I pray, Father, that you would be with us all. And we thank you now. And I just pray um, that the God of our Father and the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ would be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today.